The Science of IVF If you have ever wondered about the science behind IVF and how embryos are formed, this guided tour through the Melbourne IVF Embryology Laboratory will explain how our embryologists help you achieve your dream of having a family. Embryo Creation and Development In IVF treatment, an embryo needs to be formed and develop before it can be transferred to a woman. This involves many steps over several days and begins with the egg collection. Egg collection and sperm preparation. Step one, preparing the egg. For the egg collection, fluid from the ovary called follicular fluid is removed and examined by the embryologist who isolates the mature eggs, only about one tenth of a millimeter in diameter. The embryologist identifies the eggs by a large mass of cells and material called cumulus, which surrounds the egg during ovulation. Step two, sperm for IVF. On the day of egg collection, the male partner produces a fresh sperm sample at about the same time the female's eggs are collected. In preparation for IVF, the embryologist then separates the motile sperm from the seminal fluid. Here it undergoes a process called centrifugation, where it is concentrated by spinning it through a special solution. At this stage of the sperm preparation process, should the sample not be sufficient for IVF and ICSI is required, the embryologist will discuss the findings with the fertility specialist. In some cases, sperm collection by testicular biopsy may be required. Step 3. Insemination. IVF is performed by two methods, standard in vitro fertilization, or IVF, and intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI. With standard IVF, an egg is placed into a dish with a large number of sperm, then left overnight in an incubator to fertilize. However, in many cases, your fertility specialist will recommend ICSI. With ICSI, a single sperm is directly injected into each egg using special scientific equipment. As the egg is one-tenth of a millimetre in diameter and the sperm many times smaller, an embryologist performs this delicate procedure under the microscope. The fertilisation process. At Melbourne IVF, we offer a model for embryo culturing that is designed to provide each individual patient with the best possible outcome. Embryos can either be cultured for a few days with a transfer taking place on day two or three after egg collection or be grown for an extended culture period up to five or six days before transferring back to the uterus. Your fertility specialist will have decided with you what approach will be the best for you and may modify your treatment to give you the best outcome. As your embryos develop, we will contact you to inform you of their progress. The incubation of embryos occurs by placing them in special growth fluids called media, referred to as culturing. The embryos are then incubated and monitored for two to six days. The fertilisation takes place in incubators at 37 degrees, where the atmosphere, humidity and temperature are carefully monitored and controlled. Cleavage stage transfer. The day after egg collection, morning. In the early hours after fertilisation, the egg begins to display two pronuclei in the centre, one from the male and the other from the female. These are observed under the microscope at this time to confirm that fertilisation has taken place. The day after egg collection, Afternoon. Embryos are then assessed towards the end of the day to determine if they have developed beyond the pronuclear stage. Here we see a fertilized egg which has gone beyond the pronuclear stage and divided, resulting in two cells called blastomeres. Two to three days after egg collection. Over the next two to three days after egg collection, the embryos will continue to develop in the laboratory. This four cell embryo has further divided, resulting in four blastomeres. Often by the third day, embryos will have divided into eight cells. The embryos to be transferred on day two or three will be chosen after assessing the development and appearance under the microscope. Blastocyst stage transfer. Over the next four to five days after fertilization, the embryos will continue to develop with minimal disturbance. The benefit of this was highlighted by studies completed at Melbourne IVF using time-lapse images. As embryos require different nutrients whilst they continue to grow, the culture medium is changed on the afternoon, two days after egg collection. Embryos developed to day five or six are known as blastocysts. By day five, the embryos will have divided and may contain up to 100 cells or more. Embryo transfer. 
Once the embryos have developed and the embryo with the highest chance of pregnancy success has been chosen, the embryo transfer procedure takes place. A cleavage stage embryo will be transferred two to three days after egg collection. A blastocyst stage embryo will be transferred five to six days after egg collection. The embryologist prepares the embryo ready for transfer and together with your fertility specialist is happy to answer any questions you may have. Some patients' embryos may require testing for genetic or chromosomal abnormalities. This is done by a technique known as embryo biopsy. An embryo biopsy can be done either three days after egg collection, when one or two cells are removed from the embryo, or on day five or six, when approximately five cells are removed. The biopsied cell, or cells, are then analysed in-house at our specialist laboratory called the Pre-Implantation Genetic Diagnosis Laboratory. After analysing the cells removed from the embryos, scientists can determine which embryos are most likely to result in the birth of a healthy baby. Embryo cryopreservation. Any additional good quality embryos can be frozen or cryopreserved and used in future transfer cycles, known as a thaw cycle. The techniques used at Melbourne IVF are to immerse the embryos in a series of special fluid solutions to protect their cellular structure. They are then placed into storage containers which are cooled either slowly over a few hours, slow freezing, or rapidly, vitrification, depending on the treatment type. The embryos are then placed into tanks of liquid nitrogen for longer term storage. Embryo thawing. The thaw process involves rapidly warming and rehydrating the embryos. Sometimes individual cells within the embryo are damaged by the freezing process. These embryos can still go on to produce a healthy pregnancy. However, the more the embryo is damaged, the less likely it is to develop. Sometimes all of the cells within the embryo are damaged. In this case, the embryo will not be transferred. We hope you now have a better understanding of the science behind IVF. If you have further questions, please speak with your Melbourne IVF fertility specialist.